on let's see yeah any questions on this before we move on okay no all right so the final thing which we're going to do for 2050 quote unquote review is what is called techniques of circuit analysis all right but technically speaking there's only one technique uh, nodal is the only one right nodal analysis it finds unknown node voltages so wrt is with respect to a ground okay there is mesh and i will put a star because mesh doesn't always work it finds what so in if you what is the dual of this if you paraphrase this mesh analysis finds what does it find more specifically unknown mesh currents okay it's mesh so the other three you learned are actually circuit simplification techniques circuit simplification techniques are what uh Devon and Norton, uh, source transforms, superposition, and I'll put in a couple of things I didn't cover: uh, voltage divider. Oops, can't spell today. And current divider. These are also circuit simplification techniques. Uh, has everybody heard of voltage divider and current divider? Yes? Okay. Do you want me to cover this or no? No. All right. So then I'll get into nodal analysis. So here's nodal. Okay. So nodal, so if you look at this problem, so I'll just do this problem. Okay. Hopefully that copied it properly. So so the question is, find uh, so find unknown node voltages, okay, and I is some function of V. Right? I just give hyperbolic tangent. It doesn't have to be; it can be anything, right? Doesn't matter. In the sense nodal analysis doesn't care, right? So here's the solution. Right. Step one is you pick a ground node. And you can pick any node as ground. The rule of thumb is you pick the node with the most number of elements connected to it, which is this guy. Yes? Okay. So, step two. Okay, let me use different colors. Label unknown node voltages. Yes. So what are the unknown node voltages? Is the voltage at this node known with respect to ground, of course? Yes, this is a constant. Just because it's a symbol doesn't mean it's an unknown. This is constant V1. That's what it means. This is done. Right? We don't need to. This is not an unknown node. What about this guy? No, you can't call this V2. This is not V2. Is that clear? V2 is the voltage from this point to this point across these two nodes. This is unknown. Call this VA. Okay? You might have learned this in 2050. What kind of a voltage source is this? That's not connected to ground. What do you know what it's called? The voltage source is not called super node, but you can use a super node around this. But what is this called? It's called a floating voltage source because it's not connected to ground. Okay, super node. You can enclose this in a super node, right? Uh, if you haven't heard of super node, that's fine. 
the point is this node here let me use a different color is not an unknown node voltage that's because if this is va can you write this node voltage with respect to ground i mean that's what a node voltage is right so like i said node voltage with respect to a ground can you write this node voltage in terms of va yes or no and if yes tell me what it is first of all do you understand what i asked you understand the question yes or no so if you understand the question what is this node voltage with respect to ground so you want to call this vb yes equals what that's right okay that's because this voltage is va yes this voltage is vb so our va minus vb is equal to v2 yes or in other words vb is va minus v2 you take va you drop by v2 you give vb is that clear a common mistake which students make is they say the current through r2 is v2 over r2 no v2 is not a cross r2 okay and you can't memorize all this right you have to understand it that va means voltage at node a with respect to ground again like i said all the way earlier va with respect to ground means plus minus va vb means plus minus vb kvl means va minus vb is v2 again i keep uh, hopefully it's not boring right if you're not this proficient by end of next week 2060 is very difficult right all right so well you can keep working on it like in the sense it's not difficult to get this but you have to work on this right so in fact the good news is in this problem we have only one unknown node voltage va so that's step 3 Three of nodal analysis is write K C L at unknown node voltages. So for K C L we need currents. So let's call this I one. Let's call this I two. This is already I. So I plus I one plus I two is equal to zero. I mean you can pick one of the currents going in. Doesn't matter. again the final step of nodal analysis is it doesn't matter what circuit you're given these are the four steps of nodal analysis there are esoteric methods like supernode or right? you can use it if you know it but i don't use it right so step 4 is write i mean replace unknown currents from kcl equation that is step 3 with unknown node voltages and to do this okay you need to know whatever the necessary laws are in this case you have resistors which follow ohm's law okay and you have this guy but i know what i is it's tan h of v where v is the voltage across this device okay all right so let me zoom out one implies so i is tan h of v i'll leave v as it is right now what's the expression for i1 in terms of va and r1 what is it what's i1 it's va over r1 it's va minus 0 over r1 because the here it's va current flows from 
positive n to negative n, so it's Va minus 0 over R1 or it's Va over R1. Okay. Yeah. What's the expression for I2 in terms of Va? Well, this is also I2. There is the current through R2. Yes? I2 is simply Vb over R2. Yes? But Vb is Va minus V2. So, in one step, I can write this is Va minus V2 over R2 equals 0. Okay? Is that clear? But in this equation, we have one equation, we have two unknowns, right? We have VA and V. Can I write V in terms of VA? I mean, if I can, I'm done. Can I? This voltage here in terms of VA. Ah, good point. So, the, the claim is VA, uh, let me copy this thing, paste it here. So, here is our friend VA. So, the claim is V is V1 minus VA. Is that right? So how did you get this? So let me ask you that. It's okay if it's wrong, but this is not correct. But how did you, so how did you get this? What, what did you use to get it? What is the systematic approach? Okay. Okay, okay, let's put a ground node in here. So this is V1, that's right. So, yeah, V is in between, that's right. But to get this, the systematic, so this is incorrect. So let's see how to systematically get it. We use KVL, right? So if you use KVL, you have, so let's say you go around this loop. You go up by VA, you drop by V, you drop by V1 to give zero. In other words, V is VA minus V1. And you can say V, the voltage is the volt, voltage is the plus end minus the voltage of the minus end, assuming these two are with respect to ground, right? So uh, here it is. These are the two equations. And my solution, I wrote it as one equation. Okay. These are the two equations to solve the circuit. So this is nodal analysis, four steps. Pick a ground node, label unknown node voltages, write KCL at unknown node voltages, eliminate unknown currents in KCL equation with unknown node voltages. That's it. That's nodal analysis. It applies to any circuit. If the circuit is not physically realizable, you will get answers like, assuming you did your nodal analysis correctly, you'll get answers like 5 volts equals 3 volts and all that stuff. Right? And the beauty is, it's only four steps. And the reason why this works is it comes from graph theory. Okay, And we're not going to cover as to why this works. So very, it's very, very elegant, right? Just imagine, any circuit on the planet can be solved using nodal analysis. It's like one method. Right? So that's nodal. So any questions on nodal uh, with respect to this problem? Right. Okay, so there is, let's do Thevenin and Norton, okay? Because if we can do Thevenin and Norton, sup, source transforms is easy. So let me ask you this. What's the concept behind Thevenin? Well, if you know Thevenin, you can do Norton. If you know Norton, you can do Thevenin. What's the concept behind it? Like, forget, don't tell me the algorithmic steps. I don't want that. I mean, that's the algorithm. When does Thevenin and Norton work? When doesn't it work? So that's just the concept. So start, start talking, right? So say something. Right? So what do you think about it? Like, how, how do you approach it? Because the reason you probably struggle with Thevenin and Norton is you don't understand the concept. So 
So let's let's see if you understand it. So what's the concept behind it? So nothing is just blank. Like the, uh, I can assure you, there's a concept behind it. Yes. Okay. So some terms are coming out. So circuit with a single load. Yes. What's your name? Sorry. So Matt says circuit with single load. Okay. But I'm looking for something. This is correct. But I'm looking for something conceptual. Why does Steven and Norton work? It's actually a beautiful method, right? So let's say you're in lab. Somebody else tells you there's a linear circuit. Find the Thevenin equivalent of this. What would you do across a pair of terminals? You are given the multimeter. So somebody asks you, so here, this is the concept, right? So here is a linear circuit. Terminal AB. So in lab, how would you find the Thevenin equivalent? What would you do? Thevenin equivalent at AB. So this is the concept. Check what voltage. But what do I connect across AB? So you take a voltmeter and you just... So you're measuring what, what is that called? There's a specific term for it. Open circuit voltage, right? Open circuit voltage. And then what do I do? I'm given a, let's say I'm given a voltmeter and an ammeter. So what do I do? So you measure open circuit voltage. What's the next thing you measure? You measure the short circuit current flowing from A to B. Yes. So, and then you define our TEV as VOC over ISC. So ISC, this is IAB. Okay, it's flowing from A to B. So this linear circuit can have like, I don't know, a thousand resistors, okay, voltage sources, current sources. As long as they are linear, this is the equivalent. The entire circuit can be replaced by this. But why? Like, that's that's the conceptual part. Why does this work? The key word is linear. So when I say linear, what comes to your mind? Linear is, what's the picture that comes in your head when, you say, when I say linear? A line. How many points do you need to describe a straight line? Two. Okay. So you need two points to describe a straight line. Plus or minus V, same thing. And Thevenin was a French engineer who figured out the easiest two points to describe are the intercepts. That's it. The open circuit voltage is one intercept. Yes? The short circuit current, okay. Let's be really careful, right? This is the crux behind Thevenin's theorem. In the sense, let's see if you really understand this. So here is I, okay? This is VOC. So we are assuming here that VOC is positive. Our TEV for now is also positive, okay? So the open circuit voltage falls on the positive x-axis. Is that clear? This is one intercept. The short circuit current obviously is going to be on the y-axis, the other intercept. Yes? Where does ISC lie? Here or here? Well, you can figure it out from what I have here, like from these uh, constraints itself. But I want you to think about it. So, which one is it? Is ISC positive or is it negative? Like this. So if it's positive, is this slope positive or negative? Negative, right? So 
if you want to describe this as a picture, what I have here, let's say I put this constraint on here. And this is what the IV looks like. And if you actually short this, okay, over here, measure ISC. So in this case, I1 is equal to ISC. Yes. But if you're, so this is VOC now. Yes. So if you look at the way, what the, what the heck did I do? Hold on, hold on, hold on. I screwed something up. So if ISC is positive, hold on, what happened here? Hmm. VOC or TEV, this is ISC. So ISC is VOC over our thev, but then if I plot a positive ISC, why do I get a negative slope? Let's see. So, my, so the signs, right? We need to resolve this. So, open circuit voltage is positive. The short circuit current is also positive. And the slope is negative. All right. Okay. So, I just figured out. So, given this picture, Okay, this is the graph, IV graph. Is that clear? I realized what mistake I made, so think about it, right? In other words, what is this actual slope is the question mark. Huh? So think about it, right? So I'll cover this tomorrow. But anyway, the concept behind Thevenin's theorem is you pick the two simplest points for simplifying this linear circuit, the open circuit voltage and the short circuit current. That's it. That's why it works. Okay. So if this circuit's not linear, let's say you have diodes and all that stuff in it, you can't do this. Yeah. So the way you find Thevenin's uh, Thevenin equivalence, like for example, this problem, well, you have to use circuit analysis. So let's do that. Oops. All right. Oops. Cut this. Next page. All right. So the question is find the equivalent at AB. So we have to find the open circuit voltage and the short circuit current. Look, there are shortcuts to Thevenin theorem. You can turn off independent sources, put a test source in, find our Thev. But the essence is, you find the open circuit voltage in the short circuit current. I don't have time to cover all the different nuances of Thevenin's theorem. If you want, uh, tomorrow again, like I told you, 12 to 1, I'll have extra, quote unquote, uh, office hours in S344. So show up if you want to do more, if you have or when you have questions. But what I'm going to do right now, is it's much simpler in the circuit to find VOC and ISC. So let's find VOC. So what's the open circuit voltage? But before we start, how much current flows in here? None, this is zero, okay? Because by KVL, I mean not KVL, KCL, save this, and then let's start this again. By KCL, the current which flows here has to come back, right? So, well, the current, if there's a non-zero current that flows here, it can't come back on the same wire. So in other words, because these two nodes are not connected, these two circuits are isolated. This is actually a model of an amplifier. Okay, that's what it is. You'll see this later in your other courses. But anyway, it means 
these two circuits are isolated from each other. Yes, you might have seen this in 2050. If you didn't, it's fine. So Vx by voltage divider is given by 1k over 1k plus 1k times 12 volts. Okay, 6 volts, right? Equal resistors, the voltage divides equally. Yes. So this is 6 volts. That's great because then VOC is very easy to find. Yes. So VOC is what? How do I find the value of VOC? So what's VOC? So in other words, VOC is across R3. So it's a resistor, linear resistor. I can use Ohm's law. Do I know the current flowing through the resistor? Huh? It's this guy, right? This guy comes here and goes like this. So it's 2 times 10 to the negative 3, which is millisiemens Vx. Okay. So now, Ohm's law gives V equals I. It's a voltage controlled current source times R, which is 3K. But what's the sign? Negative, right? Current enters the negative direction of voltage drop. It's a negative sign, yes? So it turns out this is negative, let's see. So it's just milli and the K cancel, so I get negative 2. Vx is 6 times 3, negative 36 volts. That's Voc, okay? Is that clear? ISC is this fellow. So when I connect a short circuit across these terminals, this resistor gets shorted out. Yes. So ISC is simply minus 2 millisiemens times Vx. How, why do I know it's minus? Because this current comes here. The voltage across the resistor is zero. So all the current flows through here, keeps rotating around. But Vx doesn't change. So how much is this? Uh, negative 12 milliamps. Yes? Yes? Therefore, R thev. That's why the sign is important. Okay. Therefore, R thev is VOC over ISC, which is... 3K, yes. Negative 36 volts divided by negative 12 milliamps, 3K. Therefore, the Thevenin equivalent of the circuit is basically it's an inverting amplifier, negative 36 volts in series with 3K. Okay, so you put in 12 volts, you get negative 36 volts out. That's all it is. So any questions so far? So this is Thevenin Norton. Well, this is Thevenin. Let's look at Norton. A friend. So to do that, we need to look at something called source transforms. Right? So source transforms. And I'm actually not going to cover mesh. You're welcome to use mesh. I won't use mesh. Right? Uh, because nodal is sufficient. There are only a few circuits where mesh gives like a better, easier system of equations to solve. But I always use nodal. If you want to know how to do mesh, stop by my office and we can talk about it. Right. Uh, source transforms. Right. So it's source transforms. Da, da, da. Or thev. Okay. So this is Thevenin. So double arrow means you can go both ways. So what we can do is instead of writing VOC in series with RTEV, I can write this as the short circuit current in parallel with RTEV. Okay? Because if you look at this, at terminals A, B, right, these two circuits behave the same way. That is, if I short here, I have ISC flowing through, correct? It's the same thing over here. 
and this ISC I'm going to define as VOC over R theta. Okay, so this is Norton. So it's either voltage source in series of the resistor or current source in parallel with the resistor. So in other words, wherever you see voltage source in series of the resistor, you can replace it with a current source in parallel with the resistor and vice versa. Okay, that's source transforms. And actually what I'll do is I'll leave off examples of source transforms uh, because we will look at source transforms when we definitely do phasers, right? They'll come in. So circuit analysis technique. And uh, sorry, circuit simplification technique. Sorry, sorry. And you can see I can't always do this, right? I need to have a voltage source in series of the resistor. Okay. If not, I can't do this. And for finding Thevenin equivalence, the circuit better be linear, which is not true for nodal, okay? And superposition also, what I'll do is I'll just mention superposition because I'm gonna cover this actually when we do uh, circuit analysis with phasers. Superposition is quote unquote one source at a time and is only valid for linear circuits again. But what I want you to understand within the next week or so is nodal, okay? But that requires you a uh, voltage divider, current divider, for example. But understanding nodal requires you to know, as you saw in this problem, KCL, KVL, Ohm's law, right? No sign errors, nothing. Because if you, I'm dead serious, like if you don't get this straightened out by end of next week, then we really have to talk, right? So for example, you look at this homework. So this one, if it is an ideal voltmeter, an ideal voltmeter has infinite resistance, yes? So this is basically an open circuit here. So if it's an open circuit, these two circuits are not related to each other, yeah? So you can quickly find, you should be able to quickly find Vx, right? So same thing here, right? So for example, if you look at this problem, You can do like uh, source transforms, you can try it that way, but it's not recommended because it's easier. Okay, so the voltage here, okay, so 0.5 is 1.5 volts. Okay. How did I do that? 5K in parallel with 5K is what? 2.5K. 2.5K in series with 0.5K is what? 3K. 3K in parallel with 3K, the one milliamp splits equally. Half a milliamp, half a mil times 3K is 1.5 volts. If you're not this quick by the end of next week, I'm serious, talk to me. Right? These problems I got are actually, they're Berkeley exam problems, the 2050 equivalent problems. But even the problems I gave you are kind of from there. But if you look at their tests, you can go to their HK and look at look at all the tests. They're like, they are only like an hour long, but they have like 30 problems, right? Like these. Because these are, you must understand the concept, right? This concept involves KCL, KVL, sign conventions, power, right? And DC is, I mean, constant is the easiest way to do it. This is a current source. I mean, it's a, <laughs> this is an ammeter. So this is a short circuit. Yes, ideal ammeter. See, it's a short circuit there. Yes. So this hint, you have to do source transforms, okay? The answer is 2.5 milliamps, I think. No, yes, it's 2.5 milliamps. Because 10 volts in series with 10K is one volt in parallel with 10K. What, ah, what am I saying? One milliamp, it's time to go, right? So I'm trying to make mistakes. So as the general rule of thumb, when you start making mistakes like these, it's time to go, it's time to start doing this. So it's one milliamp in parallel with 10K. Four milliamp, 10K, 10K, one milliamp are in parallel. You combine them in parallel, you get five milliamps. Five milliamps splits equally across 10K. So it's 2.5 milliamps in one branch. Okay, so like, so that's how all these problems are. So I, like if you initially struggle, it's okay. But as you get towards the end, I'm serious, you should start getting quicker at these. All right, so keep working on this.
trust me, you work on this, you'll become quicker. Right? If you really want to be crazy, you can do what I did. And not only me, my friends also did. We did every problem from the back of the book. I'm not kidding. Right? Each and every one. If you're interested in circuits, you would do that. Right? This should, if there's not, if there's not motivating you, this is boring. No comment. So, now what we're going to do is, as I promised, tomorrow we're going to start op amps. Here, where's, where's the little syllabus? Oh, here's op amps. So, op amps, my favorite topic. Right. So we're going to one week. We're going to cover op amps. So we're going to do. Op amps and negative feedback. Uh, well, first of all, what the heck is an op amp? Second, op amps and negative feedback. So amplifier circuits, inverting amplifier, non-inverting amplifier, voltage summing amplifier. Okay, and then we're going to get into positive feedback circuits. So again, op amps is a, another area which will help you reinforce your 2050 stuff. But please, like it's and uh, yeah, and next week we're actually going to have a lab, and in the lab as I promised, next week is week three. Where are the labs? Oh, labs are here. So as I promised, we're going to build negative resistor. OK? It's not nothing to be scared about. It's actually very easy to analyze. And trust me, this is a negative resistor. Looking in here, you'll see like negative slope. It's a negative, I think, 1K. As long as the amps in the linear region. So once we understand all this, then, and you already did complex numbers, it's boom, all right? So in week four, what we will do is we'll actually look at an area. So we'll build oscillators, circuits that produce square waves, okay? But the point of this is we really cannot use 2060 to analyze these circuits, okay? Because 2060 assumes all your circuits are linear. This is not a linear circuit. So 2060 is very special. So after we do this, okay, you have an exam. So this exam will basically cover, we'll talk about it when we get closer to it, again, DC circuits, right? So it's another opportunity for you to get it, get it straightened out. So lab exam is also in week four. And then it's just phase that analysis. You will see then in week six that power is not v exactly VI for AC circuits. That's because, look, the big thing about AC is your sinusoidal sources has both magnitude and phase, yes? Complex numbers that are a compact way of representing that. Because you're gonna have magnitude and phase, you have different definitions of power. The, if you want the equivalent of VI, you could say it is complex power. But we'll talk about it when we get there. Then, so, so once we talk about power, there is another thing which your DC circuits don't do. That is, your 2060 circuits can act as filters, low pass filter, high pass filter, band pass filter. That's what we will do in week eight, okay? And in week nine, we'll look at more filters. But what I'll do towards the end of the course is we'll look at 2070 as well. 2070 is basically 2060 generalized. So there's something called as a Laplace transform. I'm not going to quiz you on the exam. Actually, I made a mistake here. I said covers material in weeks one through nine, excluding this, obviously. Okay. So this is 2070. It's only like a week and a half. That's all 2070 is. It's Laplace transform, Laplace transform, Laplace transform, over and over again. So yeah, again, don't be scared of this, that you have to become better at it. You will become better at it if you're motivated, you're mindful, and you practice. Trust me, you don't practice. It's, it's I know only very few people, actually, I don't know of anyone, even the geniuses, like, um, if you want, you can ask Dr. Gerald Thomas, you'll probably see him tomorrow. So you heard of, who heard of sort of Richard Feynman? Who has seen his lectures? So Richard Feynman is a great physicist, right? He has all your physics curriculum. You can thank him or hate him. It's due to him, right? So he standardized it. So his lectures are free for on, are free online. You can find videos of his lectures. They're fascinating. They're awesome. And Gerald Thomas used to work with Richard Feynman. And he told me that if you look at the amount of preparation which Feynman did for his lectures and for his research, you'd be astounded. It's like this thick pages. So it's not like geniuses didn't work. They worked really hard. Albert Einstein spent seven years 
learning the math before he actually came up with relativity but he's god knows how much time he spent thinking about it <laughs> but so it's not true that the geniuses did not practice they did practice you just don't see it so you just don't hear about it so please practice and yeah so start working on these problems and again tomorrow i'll be in there from uh, 12 to 1 I'm, i'm pretty much in and out of my office throughout the day so if you stop by i mean you could stop by when you have time All right